the company that we are talking about today, SurveyMonkey, was founded in 1999 uh, and has enjoyed quite a lengthy lifetime as a private company, kind of an under the radar unicorn. Right. I mean, the brand's been around forever. Like, like you said, you know, I recognize it from high school, and you know, people would start, you know, this is right when everyone's got on the internet, and you take these, you know, random little online surveys and polls. So yeah, I mean, they've been around forever. Yeah, shares hit the market last week. Uh, the company IPO'd under the ticker SVMK, and uh, if in case anyone is not familiar, it is a software as a service company that allows people to design and distribute surveys. Uh, they have some partnerships and integrations that work with a lot of the other major tech platforms out there. Um, I'm sure that a lot of our listeners have probably taken a Survey Monkey uh, survey before and maybe not even realized it. Right. I mean, lots of people use this service because it's free and very easy to use. Um, and anytime they want to go out and collect some data or feedback about you know their business or just how how they're doing, or, you know, all sorts of purposes. And so they have that free tier, and that offers some limited functionality. Uh, they have some response limits, things like that. And then they have several individual tiers, and those go from thirty-seven dollars a month, or just about three hundred and seventy dollars annually, uh, to over a thousand dollars per year. Uh, and it scales, you know, with different functionality, branding, data exports, all that kind of stuff. They also have a negotiated pricing uh, on their enterprise segment, and so they they have a B two B side of their business. But I think that really they they start out with consumers directly. Right. I mean, they they did say that the vast majority of their accounts are individual accounts. So they estimated that you know roughly twelve percent of revenue comes from customers with organizational level accounts, or you know those enterprise negotiated ones. Um, and they have about three thousand organizational customers uh, out of about six hundred and fifteen thousand total paying users. So that's a pretty small portion. But I think that you know that being said, I think that. Uh, a lot of these accounts are still using these individual accounts for business purposes, even if they're technically registered as an individual account. Uh, SurveyMonkey says that about 80% of accounts they estimate are still using these for you know some type of business purpose, which makes sense if you think about it. I mean, this isn't a type of service where you need everyone in your organization to have an account. And kind of anecdotally, my wife actually has one at work, and she actually was telling me um, she works for the state of Colorado, but she actually shares an account with another department. So that's kind of an exact you know, situation example here where yeah, you have one account that's probably registered as an individual account. I'm not sure how that one is registered, but you have lots of people across departments using this one account. And if this sounds at all familiar, this idea of a free service that people come into, uh, they tend to deal primarily on the consumer side and then build their way into businesses, uh, it's because it is. We, we talked about a company that has a very similar model maybe a month or two ago uh, with Dropbox. Right. So they, you know, they do have a very large, you know, just like Dropbox, they have this huge, you know, uh, mass of free users, and they're kind of catch challenges to try to convert those over. But you know, you can see that in the numbers that their conversion rate isn't super high, uh, which is also kind of similar to Dropbox because Dropbox isn't really super aggressive with sales. They kind of rely more on word word of mouth marketing. You know. Same story here. Yeah, the drill down on that. Since inception, the service has 60 million registered users. Uh, they count 16 million active users, people that have used it in the last year, and 600,000 paying users. So, roughly 4% of active users are paying users, to your point, not a huge majority of them paying for the service.